and it's two past 11. Let's get this webinar started. So today will be myself, Joanne Mallet, as, as well as my partner in crime, Idan Basri. We're both program managers and we are both working on Microsoft Cloud App Security. I am myself working as part of our customer experience and engineering team, which means I am the interface between our favorite customers and our engineering and feature team. Idan here is uh, is part of our feature team and he will be able to uh, to discuss uh, how to protect AWS using MCAS with me. So hello guys, and uh, today we'll talk why protecting AWS and how MCAS can help you protect AWS. First of all, why protecting AWS? So all, uh, as all of you know, your infrastructure in AWS, the infrastructure as a service, uh, contains your apps, your directory, your data, all your sensitive information are stored in the cloud infrastructure of AWS for those who use AWS. And when we're talking about protecting uh, AWS, we differentiate it with for, for three pillars. First pillar is protect it from compromised user. And MCAS uh, will show you at, um, at the next slide how MCAS will do it. Second is protect from data leakage from S3 buckets. And S3 buckets contain the sensitive information of your organization. So in order to save this sensitive data, you, we want to prevent data leakage from these S3 buckets. And the third pillar is security recommendation. And security, security recommendation of the security configuration of AWS are really important because today, as even Gartner said, most common attack can be prevented if you have the security configuration uh, configured in the proper way, in the proper way. And often it's very difficult to review it. And today we will talk about this also. So we will uh, we will discuss about four main use cases. First use case is review the AWS security configuration best practices because we want that we want to that the configuration of AWS service in your in your tenant will be will be configuring the best practices without any risky configuration that can lead to a potential breach. We will see today how MCAS detects this security configuration and recommend you if this configuration is uh, according to the benchmark or not. It's really useful. Why? Because these configurations are really hard to review it. And when you have MCAS, you can review it very easily. And in a moment, we'll see how. The second use case is detecting publicly shared S3 buckets in order to prevent is sensitive information in these S3 buckets to be exposed publicly or to external users that are not in your organization, we will see how you can detect these S3 buckets and even remediate this potential risk. The third use case is seeing if CloudTrail logging changes are being made in your AWS tenants. CloudTrail logging can be, um, can be used by compromised accounts in two ways. First way is to close or delete or um, or stop the logging of audit trail to the cloud trail, and in this way, compromised accounts uh, or attackers want to hide their activities. Or the second way is that they want to exfiltrate data through a new cloud a new cloud trail login, and therefore they will try to create or start logging of a new cloud trail. So MCAS, uh, today we'll show you how in MCAS we detect these cloud rate logging changes and what we can do in order to prevent it. And the, third, the fourth use case is our uh, cloud-based threat that we show for cross applications, including AWS. So how we're going to do all that with our, uh, our favorite product, uh, Microsoft Cloud App Security. So for those who have not had the pleasure to work with Microsoft Cloud App Security in the past, I will give you a one minute um, uh, intro to it, but we have much more introduction documents that are available. We will share these in our reference link at the end of this slide deck. So Microsoft Cloud App Security is uh, the, the cloud access security broker developed by Microsoft. 
and not just for Microsoft, but really to help you protect uh, a large number of applications that you have in your environment. And it will protect those apps in, uh, in, uh, in, a, in a very broad way, such as, for example, making sure that we can secure access. We are able to detect any threat that is happening to an application. For some applications, we have the ability to protect the data, apply some DLP protection, um, and uh, and when it comes to uh, to your your cloud infrastructure, we also have a cloud security posture management solution that we will discuss in the next few slides today. And so now, Idan will review the the in more in details the few use cases that we uh, we are going to cover, and and then we'll we'll demo them. So the first use case, the AWS Security Configuration Benchmark and Best Practices. A short recap that we want to we want to detect which security configurations are being configured properly in the right standard benchmark properly if for the best practices that CIS, NIST, or Microsoft recommends. MCAS detects exactly which configurations, security configurations, which one of them is properly configured and which not. And for those uh, configurations that are, that are not configured properly, MCAS show these configurations. And you can, from this screen, can uh, click on this configuration and it will automatically redirect you to AWS portal in order to remediate the security configuration that was uh, misconfigured. And not only with AWS, you can do it from this one uh, screen. You can see Azure, AWS, and GCP in order to in order to detect all your security configuration within the IS uh, services that we have um, that we have uh, in AMCAS. The second use case is about detecting publicly shared S3 bucket. And as I mentioned earlier, S3 buckets can contain sensitive information of your organization and when sensitive information within these S3 buckets can be access, accessible from externally external externally users or even just public user that if this S3 bucket is publicly shared these can lead to a breach in your intellectual property or sensitive information for a specific user that are that has this information in the S3 buckets so MCAS can detect S3 buckets that are publicly shared within two clicks. And these policies, the, the, the previous policy and this policy also, just can be, there are already created policies in MCAS. And when you enter to your tenant in MCAS, uh, you just need to enable them and you don't need to create them from scratch. You just took a look in order to enable them and confirming it, and you will get the security configuration and the S3 buckets publicly sharing detection. In order to remediate S3 buckets that are publicly shared, you can manually remediate uh, from MCAS, or you can even automatic remediate. And when MCAS detects these, these S3 buckets, you can uh, make, these, make these S3 buckets private or remove specific collaborators from the shared S3 buckets. And uh, if you want to be less aggressive with your S3 bucket owners, you can send them an alert that these S3 buckets are uh, publicly shared. And the third use case is about the CloudTrail log changes. And as we said, CloudTrail logging are essential for threat detection because compromised accounts or attackers want to take this cloud trail login and, uh, and exfiltrate data through these trails or high specific trails that can detect their usage in a, that is a, that is, is, is not nominally or anomaly behavior usage when you see their audit trail. So MCAS detects compromised accounts by stop or start logging or creating or deleting trails. So in this policy that is already created in MCAS, you just need to enable it from MCAS in two clicks. You will get this you will get this policy that will alert you if a cloud trail is changing is changing, and then you can investigate these specific accounts. Thank you, Idan. Now I will drive you through uh, the demo, and I will basically just repeat what uh, Idan was able to uh, to explain. 
just with a, a little bit of a technical illustration from our uh, MCAS interface. So this is a Microsoft Cloud App Security interface. I, I assume that uh, most of uh, our attendees today have seen it, but maybe not all. And uh, you can see the list of apps that we have connected. So this is a test tenant that uh, we, we use for demos, testing, and we have obviously connected AWS. And you can also, you can see it in two areas. So in app connectors and in our security configuration app list. Security configurations, uh, apps are applications for which we are able to, uh, to leverage our cloud security posture management. Um, basically the ability to review which recommendations are um, applied or not applied in a specific environment. So we're going to start with reviewing this. If you go under the investigate menu under security configuration here, you can see the list of uh, cloud security uh, of uh, cloud infrastructure that we support. So there, there's no configuration here in Azure. Again, this is a lab environment. There's no configuration for uh, for Google, but we do have an AWS environment configured in this tenant. And you can see right away the, the recommendations simply appear and you can review them. You can, uh, if needed, export that list. And for uh, remediation or for details, you can simply click on one of these and you are automatically redirected to the AWS page where you are able to review those recommendations more in detail and you are able to take action. So just in case my internet is a bit slow, you can see that from, oh, we're gonna have to wait, I guess. Um, you, you will be able to see that uh, the, the recommendations is uh, is appearing here. And yes, we have the details. We know that uh, this was updated 12 minutes ago. Uh, this is the, uh, the account that's impacted. And now from here, from your AWS uh, portal, you can take the actions that you need. So you Beyond can. Uh, the, there is a question if we can zoom a little bit. Of course. Thank you. Let me zoom as well. The AWS environment. So this one is a very typical example. Avoid using the uh, root account. Twelve minutes ago, it's because it's about when uh, a little after when I con when I connected uh, with this account the last time, just for the sake of that demo. And you can see that there are a number of other recommendations and you can see how many resources or how many accounts are impacted for each of these. And then for details, you can click on any of them and you will be able to uh, to review the details in AWS. So that was for our use case number one, reviewing security recommendation. Now let's cover use case number two and by extension number three. I will do a quick demo for uh, for use case number uh, number two. So here I'm going to the policy template page. You can see here under control templates and we have a number of policy templates that we pre created for you guys to be able to leverage easily simply without having to uh, find out all the, the details. After all, many of the users of MCAS are, are knowledgeable in the application they, they want to protect, not necessarily in MCAS, and we want to try to make your MCAS experience as simple as possible. So for that, we have a number of templates. If I simply type AWS here, you will see that all the applicable templates to AWS uh, will, be, uh, uh, will be filtered. And my recommendations in any env environment, just enable them all. By default, they're all going to be read only. It's only going to alert you. Could, in some cases, it could be a lot of alerts, but you can you can tune it down uh, afterwards. And uh, let's create one of those. So uh, the, the the discussions that we we had uh, uh, earlier, talking about publicly accessible S3 buckets or CloudTrail changes, are available here, uh, along with uh, a number of other uh, other templates that I won't cover for the sake of time but you are welcome to uh, to post any questions you, you may have in the uh, in our question list. And so let's uh, just create a simple template using uh, the first template that we see here. And as soon as I click on the plus button, you have this policy already pre-configured, uh, letting us know that, okay, we're looking for um, uh, anything that is publicly shared on Amazon Web Service. If I want to preview the result quickly, I can see that indeed I have 
two uh, two buckets that are shared right now, and that would be matched by this policy. Then you can decide which alert setting you want, and you can decide if you want to take action or not. So the, the, the good thing to know about MCAS, if you just want alerting and you do not want anything to happen, don't check anything under governance. The only way you can have something actually happening that will uh, uh, have MCAS act upon an alert is if you check one of the governance actions. In that case, you can force those uh, those uh, buckets to be private by simply clicking this box. We're, we're not going to do it right now. Um, and I'll show you the, um, I pre-created that, uh, that policy, so I will simply show you the results. So you can see that we, we had an instance of that policy already pre-created and we have two matches for this policy. No surprise, these are the two buckets that we had earlier. And by simply clicking here, I have the full list. And you can decide that you want to authorize them so they will not show up in, uh, in fervor alerts, or you can uh, simply make it private manually from here directly, or remove a collaborator so that it, it you will choose um, uh, which collaborators can uh, leverage that can use that uh, that bucket or not. So that was a very simple example on how to create uh, this kind of policy. As I mentioned, we have a large number of templates that you can use, and we strongly recommend that you simply enable them. You saw that it was literally two clicks to enable those templates, enable them all, and uh, you can always tweak those policies. These are templates, which means it's very flexible for you to change the settings, uh, enable some exceptions at your own will so that they will be more appropriate for your specific environment. Let's talk now a little bit about scenario number four, threat protection in the cloud. So Microsoft Cloud App Security uh, can help protect uh, a number of cloud applications uh, in the cloud. And um, as you know, that we the, have the fact that we have now our applications not on-prem behind the firewall or um, in a place that is easy to control, everything is in the cloud. The users are in one place. The applications are in another place. The directory is, uh, is, uh, is somewhere we, we don't know. We don't really know. It can be very challenging. And the threats that we have are very different from the threats we have, let's say, five years ago, 10 years ago. Um, and so we we are trying to uh, to help you with these kind of challenges using Microsoft Cloud App Security. So here in that um, in, in that uh, in that slide, you can see a list, non exhaustive list. There are more than that that are added on a regular basis of what MCAS can detect, not just for AWS, but for a large number of applications that we can protect. So there are things that apply to um, uh, specific applications. There are things that apply to any app. For example, uh, the typical example is impossible travel. If you have a session from an admin connecting from the US and at the same time connecting from the UK, uh, one of them should not be there. It, it should be, uh, it, it's, it's not really uh, physically possible to be in two places. So this is the kind of uh, thing that is uh, um, applicable to any app. Uh, you have uh, detections uh, that you will see in this slide that do not make any sense with uh, with cloud platforms, but others that are specifically designed for cloud platforms. So you can see here multiple delete VM activities, multiple VM creation activities. Multiple delete VM activities is very simple. If somebody is trying to do a DOS attack in your environment and is trying to delete a bunch of VMs at the same time, well, that will trigger. And, uh, and that would trigger whether it is in Azure, in AWS, or in Google Cloud Platform for that matter. So you will be able to, uh, to know that very quickly. And <clears throat> lately, even more useful, multiple VM creation activities. Uh, we've seen a number, what we have actually seen uh, in our incident response lately is that most of the attacks on cloud platforms are, um, are simply used to mine Bitcoins. So the more VMs I have, the more powerful they are and the happier I am. So you, you will have a number of people that will just uh, hack an, an admin account if they can, create a bunch of VMs, let them run, 
try not to trigger any uh, any other uh, any other system. So if we see that there is a multiple uh, VM creation activity, we will trigger that, and and you will uh, you will be notified uh, as quickly as MCAS possibly can, so that you can take action and you can uh, uh, you can stop the, the the financial bleeding in that case. So these are examples, but as as you can see, there's there's a number of things that we are we are able to uh, to protect from in terms of threat detection. And as you saw, also there's a number of uh, uh, you saw the templates before. They can be tweaked. You can detect any uh, other uh, kind of activity that is happening in AWS. Create a policy out of it. And we fulfilled our mission with um, uh, describing all of that in less than 30 minutes. That was our goal, hero to zero in less than 30 minutes. Now I want to make sure that we uh, we review the questions that are still open in um, in the in the chat, and um, if there are any, and take any additional questions. So let me uh, let me scroll back uh, a little bit. I see that there's a number of uh, of questions here. So the recommendation for the security finding is from AWS or from Microsoft. We are using the best practices providing by, provided by AWS here. We are not uh, pretending to be experts in, uh, in AWS and uh, Amazon is, uh, is, is master of their, their solution. So what we are doing here is helping you centralize recommendations from AWS, from Azure, from Google Cloud Platform in the same place. So you have one portal and you can easily investigate all your Cloud Platform at the same time. Uh, there's another question with two likes from uh, Dean. Where can we find something about when to use um, uh, what for MCAS or ASC? Excellent question. We've had this question um, uh, commonly lately, especially because we, we added a number of features uh, to, uh, to Azure Security Center uh, to help review recommendations for, uh, for non-Microsoft uh, cloud platforms. So uh, my usual recommendation is um, uh, which portal is it makes the more sense for you. Um, there's there's a bit of an overlap. So at the end of the day, the, the portal that uh, that you are the most used uh, used to, that you uh, you have the most experience with, is probably going to be the one with which you will be the more uh, uh, the more efficient. In terms of roadmap, um, I am um, we we don't have um, we don't have a word on whether one or the other would be pr uh, privileged. With, uh, with future updates, but as of now, we are committed to uh, to have um, uh, security configuration and alerting from uh, from both uh, both products. Another question here is uh, how does it integrate? Does anything get deployed in AWS side? And also, how often does it pull or share the component AWS side to push notifications? So we had the integration with AWS is by API connector. And you need to, you don't need to deploy anything in AWS side. What you needed to configure the cloud trail in AWS in the security hub, and it will automatically be configured to MCAS when you, when you, when you create a connection from MCAS side. Thanks, Idan. And also, side note: if you want to see, we, we did not show the connection process because that would have been a little longer for today. But we do have. Um, we do have a blog that uh, that contains videos. Uh, you will see the link in uh, in the next slide, and you will be um, uh, you will be able to um, uh, you will be able to see a video of how we do the connection process for uh, integrating Microsoft Cloud App Security and uh, and um, and AWS. Let's go with uh, with a few more questions. One from John. Is a default configure uh, in a default configuration if Azure Sentinel MCAS connector is enabled, is it correct? All these alerts will surface as Azure Sentinel incidents. So alerts will go into um, into Azure Sentinel. Yes, uh, security recommendations will not go into Azure Sentinel. Another question is how does MCAS handle false positive? For example, when multiple VMs were created, then is a valid action request. So you can, in MCAS, uh, pick every alert if it's a false positive or true positive and close this alert. 
and uh, and then we detect false positive and make these make our policies even better. Thanks, Idan. Let me go sequentially uh, and try to uh, to respond to uh, to the following questions. I'm glad to see uh, uh, so much activity. Um, is it possible to monitor the security status of the infrastructure uh, that we have in each cloud provider? For example, if the workload, uh, the workloads have anti-malware, etc. That's a question from uh, from Mark. So you you will have the security recommendations for uh, for each uh, each platform depending on what the platform uh, sends. For example, um, I from what I, um, I I know of a, a Azure Security Center, it will check if the VMs have any malware or not, and um, and and that would appear in the recommendations in AWS, which then would be passed on to uh, to MCAS as part of this unified interface. Uh, for AWS, I am not. Positive that uh, this this recommendation is uh, is checked by Amazon. So if it's not, you would did not see it in uh, in MCAS. Uh, for now, I'm I, I so the the link for all the webinars that we have, Raju, will be uh, uh, will be in the in the in the, was presented in the first slide. Um, it is aka.ms/slash/security-webinars. We can uh, we can make a quick uh, announcement and just paste the link in a few minutes. Just browsing through the questions, see which one we have not responded to just yet. How long will the MCAT information be held in Azure Sentinel and therefore be available for advanced hunting? Uh, that's more question for uh, for our friends that are uh, that are knowledgeable on the Sentinel part. Um, you I. I'm not 100% sure what's the retention period for um, uh, for Sentinel. That being said, we also have uh, an advanced hunting feature in the Microsoft 365 Dep Defender portal um, that you can use, and the uh, the retention uh, uh, the retention period for MCAS data in that case would be 180 days. Um, so we, we I think Idan responded to the fact that we do not need an agent deployed on the AWS side. We just need a, a connection to be uh, to be configured. Um, now a connection. Another question from Anonymous. Please clarify how and when we may need to integrate uh, MCAS with Azure Security Center. What additional benefits MCAS provide that uh, ASC don't provide in Azure environment? So the beauty of MCAS is going to be the, uh, the integration, the fact that when you have more than one cloud security, one class, one um, more than one cloud solution, such as Azure and AWS and Google Cloud Platform, you can see the recommendations in all in in one interface. So that can be very convenient. Um, that being said, if you have only Azure, uh, you will uh, have the same value reviewing it from Azure or from uh, Azure from Azure or from MCAS. So at the end of the day, that that would be up to you then. Uh, question from Dean, where can I find info that explains that attacks you have seen and what tool feature setting is used to uh, to mitigate? So I'm not sure I fully, uh, fully understand the question. I'm going to try to uh, to respond. So general attacks that we have seen are, are basically what we are trying to mitigate with those alerts. As I mentioned earlier, MCAS in terms of alert is going to do mostly uh, alerting rarely anything that uh, except if you request it but rarely anything that would be a, an active uh, mitigation or remediation so you you are welcome to use the um, uh, the list of alerts to see what kind of uh, the list of alerts or policies in the mcas portal to see what kind of, uh, of of attacks we have seen and we are able to protect from at least using mcas Your question from JD, but uh, Idan responded. Uh, another question: When will MCAS incidents update made in Sentinel be reflected back in MCAS? As currently, uh, if we do close MCAS incidents, incident, they're not closed in MCAS. Um, I am not aware of any plan to have um, uh, to have some kind of a, of a two-way sync in that area. 
if if there is any any change in the future, of course, uh, you, you will you will learn about this part of our part part of our release note for the product. Another question from Dean. I think uh, there's a lot of confusion around alerts versus recommendation. Uh, that's an excellent point. It happens quite often. Anything that can be done to clarify the difference would be helpful. Uh, this goes into uh, the when to use what discussion. Excellent question, Dean. So um, alert and recommendation are, are very, uh, very different by definition. A recommendation means there is a configuration in your environment that is not optimal and that could potentially lead to security incidents, such as uh, the root account being used too often. That's not a good practice. You should limit that usage as much as possible. That being said, if you are lucky, you can use it every single day of your life and never be compromised. So it's a recommendation. An alert would be, we have seen that there was a brute force attack against the um, against the against one of the root accounts. and and. That would be uh, an immediate um, uh, an immediate incident that is currently happening, and you would want to take immediate action, not just um, uh, remediation, but but really a, a response to that kind of uh, uh, of attack. So that would be the difference between an alert and a recommendation. Recommendation, you don't follow the best practice, but potentially nothing may have happened as of now. Alert, we noticed something happened. Uh, does Azure Security Center have any threat detection capability for AWS or will it just pass through recommendations from AWS to ASC uh, dashboard? I, uh, I wish I could respond to this question. I am not an expert with, with AWS. Um, this is a question you are welcome to ask in our security uh, community. Uh, those, those tech communities will, uh, will contain, uh, will, will have people from uh, all of our teams, MCAS, Azure Security Center, and uh, and a number of our products and and we'll be uh, we'll be able to have the right people responding to these um another question from john uh follow-up question if mcas has its own aws connector if we connect azure sentinel native aws and mcas connectors it's necessary to connect mcas to aws Directly, uh, yes, they're they're using uh, um, they're not exactly using the same uh, uh, they're not in the same process, not in the same product. So if you want to use both, you do need to connect both. A question from Julio: Are you able to tell us how many percent of Microsoft customers uh, are using Microsoft Cloud App Security? that are also check AWS environment using Microsoft Cloud App Security. Uh, I don't have um, a list of, um, I don't have a percent number of how many MCAS customers have an AWS account configured, but I think uh, uh, Idan will correct me if I'm wrong. I believe AWS is the most used uh, app connector in MCAS. It's very, very much in use, and sure. we, we want to make sure that, um, thank you, Idan. And we want to make sure that uh, the, it's very used because it's very, we believe it's very valuable. And we want to make sure that uh, the, the, the highest number of customers can benefit from that. Hence that webinar today. Another question from Anonymous. We can use MCAS to monitor and analyze the threat, plus working on security recommendations from AWS. Uh, I think the response is yes, uh, simply, yeah, you, you can review, um, you can use MCAS to review the recommendations and uh, analyze any uh, any alert, any threat that is currently happening in your environment. Is MCAS multi-mode deployment recommended as a best practice? I am not sure what is uh, what is meant by this question. If you don't mind just uh, typing a little bit more details and, and we'll be happy to, uh, I'll be happy to, to respond to that. Um, and a question from Dean, how can we easily enable many S3 buckets? I am not sure I am following up the question as well, but please, um, uh, please precise it. We'll, we'll stay a few more minutes to make sure we can respond to your question. Question from Raju, 
it appears that limited documentation available for the MCAVs cloud security posture management capability. Can you share useful info and resources, please? I actually can. Let me do that as we speak. I'm, I'm following up with my uh, with with our slide. It doesn't mean that uh, we want to um, uh, we, we want to, we want to end that uh, that discussion. We want to keep uh, keep going. Let me paste a link in the chat so you will uh, you will be able to um, uh, to, uh, to to access that blog. So we are aware of the, the lack of documentation. This is why we uh, uh, we, we created together, Idan and myself, the blog that you uh, you now have pasted here. It will contain the videos that I discussed earlier that will show you the connection process for um, MCAS security recommendation and for uh, for the activity logs. And it will also contain um, uh, a discussion on, uh, on, on, uh, on the CSPM part and how MCAS can help you holistically. So uh, feel free to comment in that blog. We'll, we'll be happy to uh, to take feedback, respond, uh, even improve the, the documentation that is provided there. I see another question from uh, 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 Dean. I want to be able to tell uh, to tell clients some things like uh, if they have, uh, if they get MCAS, then they will stop three uh, of top 10 attacks seen by Microsoft uh, last month. I don't think we have such detailed documentations um, on, on which attacks we have seen. We, we don't necessarily uh, uh, provide that publicly. Uh, that being said, I can tell you that uh, just looking at the looking at the news, looking at what's happening in the press, you uh, you probably have seen a large number of data leakage due to um, uh, due to uh, mistakenly shared uh, S3 buckets. It happened not only with AWS but with um, uh, with a number of other apps. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about Box. Uh, that was the same thing. It obviously happens with uh, with Office or any other app, and, and MCAS has good features to help you, whichever app you're using. To uh, uh, to review that, so I would say that's probably one of the top risk uh, I have seen. Um, not looking even at our data, but more broadly looking in uh, in what's happening in the news and what kind of attacks we are seeing. And thank you, uh, Inti, for sharing the uh, the Ninja trading. That was the ne next link that I wanted to share. I'll take just a minute to. Uh, I can only recommend you to review that uh, that that Ninja trading. It uh, will help you again to to go with uh, from zero to hero on MCAS, not just to protect AWS, but really to uh, to master Microsoft Cloud App Security. And it, every organization is different. In some cases, here we will have today people that are more on the AWS side. Or sometimes people that are more on the, uh, the the cloud app security side of the fence, uh, but we want to uh, to whichever side you are, if you want to go a little deeper into uh, Microsoft cloud app security, that Ninja training is a very very good compilation of, of content, and um, and it can only help you uh, go deeper into your your knowledge and your skills in that product. Question from Christoph. Can AWS specific enumeration queries, S3 inspector, or suspicious CLI command be identified uh, from MCAS? Um, I can see, Christoph, that you're more on the AWS side. Um, I, I don't have a response to that question. We can, I can show you uh, something very quick. If you are just as, um, as more as a framework and how you can work with MCAS when you don't have all the, the response, Usually, if I'm looking for a specific uh, action that may have been uh, uh, committed by users, I'm going to look in the activity log here. I'm going to filter by a specific app, so in our case, AWS. And then you can see what happened. So these are the different uh, uh, the different actions that happened lately in uh, in AWS in the environment that we configured, and you can filter by activity type. So there's a number of activities that you can uh, uh, you can query. I'm not going to go through all of them. There are uh, there are probably more than 100. There's a lot and a lot of them. 
if you know something that you're looking for, for example, we, we talked about CloudTrail. That's that's an example. You you could you could type that, and it will um it will give you uh the the examples uh the the, the actions that are related to CloudTrail. Um, so if there is anything that's that's more specific, you can um uh you can also look into it. You mentioned S3 Inspector. We can just type S3 and see what other activity we have that would be related. Um, doesn't seem to have one here. Um, but if you have any other keywords, that that's where I would look for any action that I want to capture in um, in AWS. And if I'm not sure that it's in MCAS, you would be able to find out from this page, from the activity log. Let me see. I see. I see that there are additional questions being posted. Uh, Multi-mode deployment. Uh, you were so you were referring to long adjacent from firewalls, secure web gateways, and SIM cloud to cloud API based connector reverse proxy. Okay, excellent. So you're bringing a very important point, uh, Raju. The fact that Microsoft Cloud App Security could very well be four different products. Um, here we talked about mostly the cloud security posture management piece of MCAS, which is how can we help you secure AWS. But that's not all we can do. Obviously, we can do the same thing for other applications. How can we help you secure Office? How can we help you secure Box? How can we help you secure Salesforce, which is actually our next webinar as well. Um, uh, and so that, that's one thing we can do. Uh, but on top of that, we also have the ability to, uh, to help uh, our customers check Shadow IT by uh, integrating with your firewall or with, uh, with Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. Just verifying which applications your users are leveraging. Are they going to Facebook or YouTube if they're not supposed to? Things like that you're, you're able to, uh, uh, to review. Or are they uploading four gigs of data to their personal uh, Google uh, Cloud Drive? So um, uh, maybe that's not what you would want to endorse as a behavior. Um, so that's, a, that's one of the features. And we also have a reverse proxy feature where you can have MCAS proxy traffic between your client and the uh, the end application. And in that case, you, you can have much more control over what happens in the session. You can block downloads, you can block copy paste or, or, or a number of other activities. So uh, to respond to your question, Raju, yes, most customers are going to use uh, a number of those features. Sometimes you, you see customers that are going to use only one, uh, but my experience working with, uh, with a few hundred customers now, I can tell you that in most cases, uh, uh, we will see our customers trying to take as much advantage as possible as all this uh, this breadth of feature. Uh, there's, there's a lot of things and it doesn't happen overnight. Sometimes in large organization, you're going to have two, three different teams working um, on cloud app security because these are very different, um, uh, very different uh, part of the organization that will handle uh, shadow IT or DLP uh, or, or session control. Following on the list of questions, um, are there any limits with uh, uh, GCC or AWS government account? Uh, as of now, um, I will uh, I will let Idan respond to this one. If we, uh, what kind of support we have for AWS uh, government for account? For GCC, we support AWS uh, government account GCC. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Idan. Question from William, how does Microsoft see the SASE market um, as there no dedicated integration with, uh, uh, S, uh, with Secure Web Gateway and, and DLP? Uh, there's a lot of things that are currently in our, uh, in our research, in our, um, in, in our internal discussions that, uh, that I can't really, uh, really uh, uh, bring so much as of now because it's just simply way too early. Uh, but we, we, do have, uh, we do have a strong view on the SASE market. Um, but not, not much that I can share as of today for the, the content of this webinar. Uh, what data will be ingested from AWS to MCAS when we turn on the connector? Can we customize them? Uh, for example, can I also send flow traffic um, and load balance logs? So we, uh, in, in our, we have a page where in our documentation, where we detail detail how to configure your cloud trail and how to uh, to enable the uh, the connection 
from MCAS to uh, to AWS. So the, the data that we recommend that you, uh, you you put in the cloud trail will be what MCAS will uh, will capture. And um, question from Dean, yeah, what, what can be scripted? That would be the, the question that I have. I see a couple more questions coming up. So would, M uh, would MCAS uh, possible to monitor and alert only for the external traffic? It depends. Um, you can, uh, depends what you call external traffic, but you when you create policies, when you create uh, alerts, uh, you can decide that you're going to filter. For example, we were talking about CloudTrail. If you uh, if you want to uh, to to have um, a CloudTrail modification only when it's happening from outside your corporate network, you can do that by simply uh, uh, you know putting your corporate network IP addresses in MCAS, uh, which you should do for a lot of other reasons, uh, such as uh, limiting false positive for some security alerts. And um, and you will be able to uh, uh, to filter that out very simply. Is there a data classification and malware scanning across public cloud storage? Uh, not from um, not from MCAS to uh, to uh, to AWS. We are working. Uh, we have another product that is um, um, uh, not. I think it's still in preview right now or released very late, very recently called Azure Purview where uh, we will have much more features that will allow you to do some uh, some level of DLP at the cloud level. So far we ran out of questions, but I'm very happy to respond to anything else that uh, that would come in the in the chat. Please feel free. So while I'm waiting for uh, any, any other potential questions, uh, I want to thank you so much for joining that uh, that webinar. It seems we had a, a good number of attendees for today. Uh, the resources here, we, we pasted the, 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 the some of the links, such as the, um, uh, the blog with regards to AWS, the Ninja training. You are welcome to go to our uh, uh, tech communities and you can send us some feedback. We have this uh, this Elgias here if you have questions, feedback or anything we uh, we can improve in uh, in our webinar or in our product. We are uh, we are very open to uh, to hearing that and uh, and and hopefully uh, having a constructive discussion around these. I see there are no further questions, so we'll uh, we'll close the webinar in just uh, in just a minute. Thank you all for joining, and we're looking forward to having you in our next MCAS session. Uh, in uh, on the 8th of June, and we will talk about how to secure uh, Salesforce using Microsoft Cloud App Security. Thank you all.